Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our afternoon student in the workplace virtual connection. We are happy to have you here with us. My name is Anne. I'm going to be facilitating the questions here today, but I'm happy to introduce Christina Titus. She is the manager of contact center development at Dial America, and she's going to be joining us for the next half hour, answering questions about what she does and the type of work and the company that she works for. So without further ado, I'm going to send her screen live. Welcome, Christina. Hi, guys. If you would just like to start by telling us about the company that you work for and what is the work that you do. OK, so I work with a company called Dial America Marketing. Um, with us, we work with Fortune 500 companies. So anytime you were to pick up the phone and dial a toll free number or um, receive a call from a telemarketer, um, that's the type of business that Dial America does. Um, some familiar names, um, US Bank is one that's very popular. We work with them. We take care of their customer service. Um, we also take care of their sales portions. Um, so if you were to call a toll free number, let's say you had a US Bank sponsored credit card and you wanted to increase your credit line, you would have the opportunity to speak to one of our representatives that work in one of our facilities. Uh, so there's a lot of different things that we do, a lot of magazine renewals out there. If anybody still gets magazines, we do take care of those. Um, we take care of the customer service and for a company called HomeServe, where if someone were to watch a commercial, let's see anybody who knows who Mike Rowe is, who the guy from Dirty Jobs, um, he does our commercials. So if you ever saw one um, and called the toll free number for HomeServe, that would ring to one of our representatives. Um, and they would tell you about some of the coverages that are available to homeowners. So basically, in the long and short of it, we work with Fortune 500 companies. We utilize our existing business relationships to offer our current customers additional products and services they don't currently have. Awesome, thank you. Now, can you explain a little bit about the responsibilities that you have day to day in your specific job? Okay. So with my job, um, being the manager of contact center development, um, I have the pleasure of meeting every individual who were to come aboard with our company. So if you were to put an application in at Dial America's website, it would come to our office. Our employment coordinator, Catherine, um, would go ahead and give you a call. She would schedule you an interview, and then I would actually be the person that you would meet with. Um, we would go through talking about what kind of schedule you would need, basically just talk about the job, the position, the pay, um, what to expect on your journey with Dial America. And then after you've started with our company and start into training, um, I work directly with your and um, I'm sorry about that guy. I work directly with your trainers and um, they work to support you over um, your tenure with the company and I basically I'm always there for you. Anytime you would need, you have a question, a phone call, anything like that um, that you need help to support with me and my team would be there for you. Awesome. So can you talk a little bit about in your role and especially maybe supporting employees? What are some of the skills that you feel like you really need or also some of the qualities that are important to someone in your role? So that is an excellent question. I think that with our company um, and not only in my role, but as a role as a representative, there's a lot of things that you are taught throughout your education um, or at home um, that you would bring to the table. One big thing is communication, um, being able to listen and respond appropriately to our customers, but I also do the same thing with our employees. Uh, understanding an individual's need as far as what they need in a position what their desire is as far as payments and what they need to make. Um, that's a big one. Uh, computers, technology. We all know that uh, these days we live in the world of technology, so making sure you're able to utilize our computer system. Technology such as Teams, like we're using now, um, that is something that we use uh, inside of our office and our representatives who work in our building use, utilize Teams to communicate with our team leaders but we also use Teams with our work from home group 
Um, that's how they communicate with their team leaders. They have the ability to share their screens. Um, any type of support that they need, they can get it through that Teams application, phone call, video chat, as we're doing right now. Um, so there's a, a lot of different things that probably you're all familiar with right now um, because you're living and breathing the same thing that we do now. Uh, problem solving. That is a big thing with our customers. Sometimes they're going to experience an issue or have a challenge that we need to actively listen to what their problem or their issue is and then determine a solution. Um, what can we do to help this customer to get them what they need or what they're looking for? Um, so applying that, that skill right there, that active listening and responding, but also problem solving. Work ethic, um, that's a big thing. Being able to come to work on time, showing up on a daily appendant at daily basis, so attendance at school, um, that's a big thing for you guys. It's also a big thing when you're an adult and you're at work. You have to show up on time and um, be prepared to work. You know, I know we all have those rough days where we're a little sleepy or we might not be you know, 150%, but we have to at least show up 100% because those customers and the experience that we provide them, uh, they only have one. We might give that experience to 100 people, but that individual that's on the phone with us only has that one experience. So um, they always tell you that the first impressions, well, we only have one impression. So we've got to give that, give it our all every time. Um, discipline, you know, being disciplined to, to abide by your schedule. Um, different things like that as far as what's necessary, what's needed. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of anything else. Mm, I think those are the basics. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of the integral parts of it, but as far as the basics of what you would need to, you know, commun communication, computer skills, um, discipline, work ethic, um, those are, those are the mains. Yeah, and I think you're hitting on a lot of, you know, what we're hearing across the board, right, as we continue this series, that work ethic, discipline, problem solving has come up a lot, but um, I really liked that you reiterated the fact that you have to show up on time, ready to work, you have to show up every day, uh, that's how you keep your job. That's how you advance in your job for sure. And so I appreciate you hitting that home. So I want to circle back to something you had said earlier um, that you work with folks who are interviewing and potentially going to work for the company, correct? Yes. When you are going through that process with an individual, what are some of the things that you look for or that would make an ideal candidate stick out in the interview process? That's another great question. So with us, um, we do teach you everything that you would need to be successful with our company. However, there are gonna be some things that you would need to come to the table bringing. Um, communication is definitely key. Um, we can tell you um, all the scripting out there and provide that to you, but you have to deliver it at a rate that's gonna work well for your customers. So. We deal with all um, different demographics. Uh, so sometimes we need to mirror um, their delivery. So if someone is um, maybe a little bit older or there's a, a challenge as far as communication, we need to slow down our pace. So being able to read someone as far as like when I'm talking to an applicant, uh, I wanna make sure I'm able to understand every word that they're saying, so enunciating, um, also then following directions. Part of the interview process when they come to us is we have a few things that they get to do on the computer. It's called a job preview. It allows them to feel out our computer systems, go through some of the real life experiences that they would hear. So listening to a call, data entry, that's all part of our interview process. So I have a chance to evaluate how well they follow directions um, on the computer screen. Um, just like you guys probably would in a lot of the virtual schooling is there's going to be maybe some videos you have to watch, follow the directions. Um, so those are things that I'm going to look for in an employee is being able to follow those directions, the execution of it, the accuracy as far as data. Um, also, when they come to their interview, were they prompted on time? Did they follow the directions as far as dress code? Um, there's a lot of different things. Uh, coming to the table with work history is awesome. 
but you don't necessarily have to have it. You just have to have the willingness to learn, um, the desire to be the best. Um, we'll work with you and provide you all the necessary skills to be successful. Um, but we look for the same things that most people look for. Um, you know, that schedule adherence or showing up on time, following direction, communication, um, and then follow up and follow through if it's necessary in the process. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And just to follow up on something you said, you had mentioned, you know, you don't have to have prior work experience or I'm going to guess maybe prior educational experience other than high school diploma. Can you talk about, you know, what the requirements are for someone? Okay. So with us, you have to be at least 18 years of age to work with our company. Uh, we do not require a high school diploma or GED because um, we do have some students um, that are actively going to high school right now who are employed with us. And you have to have basic knowledge of the computer system. So being able to use a Windows based platform, um, data entry skills. Uh, you don't have to type 100 words a minute or anything crazy like that as long as you can get the information in accurately to the computer. Um, that's that's the main things that you have to have with us. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm going to switch gears here a little bit because what we like to ask of all of our our participants here. Can you speak a little bit about your career journey and how you got to where you are today? Absolutely. So um, I actually started with the company as a part time employee. Uh, I had applied looking for a little bit of income. I went to a couple different interviews. I fell in love with the interview process. Um, everyone was really friendly when I showed up. Uh, the schedule that I was looking for, they were able to accommodate. So I started with the company on a part time level. Um, so I've walked a day in those agents shoes, um, actually many days. I was part time for roughly three years with the company. Um, they did actually reach out to me and um, invited me to be part of their member or their leadership team. Um, I became a part time trainer. Um, been a part-time team leader, a full-time team leader, full-time trainer, active shift manager, um, recruiter, and then I became the dialer manager, uh, the assistant manager of contact center operations, and then the manager of contact center development. I've been with the company for 19 years. I just celebrated it this past month. Uh, so if you would ask me uh, 19 years ago if I would have been di at Dial America now, the answer probably would have been no, but I fell in love with the company, the continued education, the people. Um, I never thought I loved change, but apparently I do because it's always changing here. And that's something that I embrace and I love um, doing. It just keeps it exciting. So that's a little bit of my journey. Uh, I think that they paved an amazing path for me. I have done every single position in our facility um, with the exception of payroll. That's just not my thing. Um, but other than that, I've done them all. Great question. So it sounds like there's a lot of room for um, upward mobility and moving up. Can you speak? I know obviously your example really speaks to that, but it sounds like that's something the company really values and wants to mentor its employers into those positions. 100%. So every single individual in our management team at our Erie location started off as an agent on the phone and worked their way up through the company. So I think that our environment it fosters that continued education, that adult education, that upward mobility and when we have someone that might be having a little bit of a tougher day or a rough day, um, we've been there. You know, um, we walked a day in those shoes, a month, uh, years um, for some of us in those shoes. So we're really sympathetic and empathetic to the situation. Um, also, a lot of people have, you know, the desire to be the best. Um, I know that's something that I do, and knowing that there's a company you can continue to move and grow with um, is really important. Yeah, and just sticking with this for one more question, you know, what what qualities do you think it was in yourself and maybe in those other employees that really gave you the opportunities to advance and to move up? 
Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> so um, I think that for me, I, I enjoy conversating. Um, that's one something that I've always been, and my mom called me a chatty catty, a Kathy. I think that's still true to this day. Um, so communication is something that I really enjoy. Uh, that might be something that they had seen. I am someone who loves new challenges, um, you know, continuing to grow. Uh, I was always reading or trying to learn something new, a skill or a talent. And with Dial America, they provide the platform for me to always be able to learn something new and continue to develop um, my interpersonal skills. Um, they've helped me grow up as an individual, but also as an employee. So um, they've taught me a lot of life lessons and I appreciate that. And I'm still learning every day. I think we all are, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just a reminder to our participants on this session, um, we have some questions that will be coming in, but if you are unclear, you'll see a box on your screen that is like a talk bubble with a question mark in it. So that's how you find how to submit questions. Um, I will start, uh, Christina, are there any challenges in the job that you work in or maybe challenges that you see from other folks in your organization, but what are some of the harder things? Okay, so with us, um, being an agent, you know, the job is something that I would say is very repetitious. You know, doing the same thing over and over can be challenging, um, but it depends on how you look at it. Um, when I do something and over and over, I tend to get a little bit better at it each time. So um, that's something. The rejection is definitely challenging when someone, um, a customer may say that they're not interested, um, but also um, in my position, an applicant or a candidate might find that our company isn't what they're looking for. So there's rejection in this position also. Yeah, definitely. Rejection across the board is, is never easy. Um, so another question, what piece of advice would you give to seniors or, or I guess high school students in general who are trying to navigate, you know, making the decision for what comes next? Okay, so I would say put together a list of things that you're looking for or that you need to be successful as far as know your budget, what you need as far as how many hours you need to work at the rate that company would pay you. Um, also know your boundaries as far as I know that this type of schedule, um, you know, I can, I'm a daytime person, so know your internal clock. Um, I'm a morning person, so I need to work in the mornings. Don't stretch yourself too thin. Um, you know, I'm going to go to school in the morning and I've got sports in the evenings and then I'm going to work late night. Um, if you're a morning person, probably towards the end of the day, you're not going to be able to give that 150% and you want to make sure that you're able to give that, you know, in each thing that you do. So know your calendar um, and know your own schedule, know your budgets. Um, and don't be scared to ask questions. Uh, that is something that is very, very important. No question is a dumb question. Um, and sometimes you ask a question that might stump the individual that you're asking. That means that they're also learning in the process with you. So always a good question. Yeah, that's very sound advice for sure. So somebody has asked, um, what do you dislike about your job? Um, that is a really tough one. Yeah. <laughs> what do I dislike about my job? Um, I would say that maybe it's not so much dislike, but I do have specific goals that I need to meet and our company has to meet. And something that I might not like is when we don't come in meeting our goals. And I tend to be fairly tough on myself when it comes down to um, not coming out on top or not being number one. Um, so we do um, have different things for other centers that we compete against because we have more than one Dial America nationwide. So I like to see our names at the top of it. So one thing I guess would I would say I don't like is when our site Erie is not at the type at the top of the list um, or in the number one center. So that's probably the part that I don't like the most is if we come in not at top. So to follow up on that, what are some things that you guys like might do differently if that that time you don't come out on top? How do you adapt and make changes? Good question. So some of the things that we look for is the same things we look for in our candidates. We're 
our schedule adherence. We want to make sure that our employees here are working the schedule that they have. So one thing that we might do is if our schedule adherence isn't at the top of the rankings, we might have some additional conversations with our employees and really make sure we have them put on the most appropriate schedule. And it might be as simple as we just need to modify it by 15 minutes because of their school, their bus might come a little bit later and we didn't figure that in when we built their schedule. Um, or with the coronavirus, we found that some of the schedules we had originally set up with individuals, um, we needed to change because EMTA had changed their bus cycle. So it was negatively impacting some of our employees' schedules and it wasn't something that was in their control. So that's definitely something that we would, I guess, modify, change um, to help the, uh, the individuals. Yeah. And I really like that because it shows that your company values your employees, right? And takes into consideration some things that are going on in their world that, you know, we absolutely can't control like the coronavirus and everything going on with that. Um, looks like, can you talk about, you've mentioned a couple of the jobs that are available um, and you'd sort of just thrown out the ones that you had had. Can you maybe talk a little bit about those and what the responsibilities are for the varying positions you could have at Dial America? And maybe not all of them, but but a okay. couple. So um, starting off is as an agent, we do have customer service and sales positions. Um, that's the most immediate way to get into our company. Um, and through Erie, that is the only way to get into our company because we only promote from within. So you start off with that uh, customer service sales position and the normal transition from that would be in a part time um, seasonal position. So what we actually do is we invite individuals to learn about our management position and we start to mentoring them. So we provide them with an education on some of the responsibilities as a management member here, slowly introducing one by one, allowing them to master it. So because we understand some people might want it, they think they want to be in management and then when they get into it, they realize, whoa, this wasn't what I was expecting. Um, so we have a mentoring program where we allow you to really feel out the responsibilities of the position, learn um, and master each step one by one. So when you do become a permanent member of our staff, uh, you've really given yourself a strong foundation so that you can continue to grow. Um, that's one big thing that we always say is you have to have a strong foundation to continue to grow or to get better. Without a strong foundation, everything will fall apart. Um, so we work on those things. Then with the next step, it would be become a permanent part-time team leader. Um, after a permanent part-time team leader, your responsibilities increase to a full-time team leader. And with many of our positions, what you're in charge of or what you do, they just grow at a different level. Um, we manage our individual schedules, the quality of their calls, um, their performance as far as the sales aspect, also making sure they're delivering everything to their customers, um, you know, honestly and accurately and pretty much they manage multiple individuals and as they grow with the company, their team grows with them. Then at the next level up would be a shift manager or senior team leader and they're managing um, a larger team, but they're also mentoring some of our part time staff. Um, allowing them to understand the additional responsibilities that come along. We have client sessions where they listen to our employees calls and they provide us feedback on how we sound and um, the team leaders put together plans of action to modify or um, allow that individual to be successful. So those senior team leaders um, or shift managers work on those development plans with the part time um, leadership and that continues through the agents. Um, as as you continue to grow, your responsibility grows. The next thing is, is managing um, not just the small team, but the large group of individuals. Maybe you're the evening manager and you run um, and manage all aspects of everything from five o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. Um, same with our morning managers um, from scheduling to attendance, quality, performance, all those boxes. Yeah. And I appreciate that you shared that, at least at the Erie facility, um, that it's promoting from within. And so, you know, valuing the employees that you have and training them and making an investment with them. And that's a great opportunity for, 
for a student out there who might be considering and a good thing for them to know. So another question that might be a little tricky, um, what are some interests <laughs> that a high schooler, like if a high schooler has that might translate really well to working in your company? Interest, abilities, anything along those lines? So that's a, another good question, a tough one, but good one. <laughs> So um, I actually started uh, after I was out of high school and I was just uh, in college. So when I started with the company, the strong communication skills. So if you're someone that has delivered a speech in school or had to speak in front of the classroom, um, that's something that might be helpful in this. However, I will tell you that there's individuals who tell you they're a horrible public speaker, but they do amazing over the phone. Um, for example, they might be someone who um, were like they rehearsed lines as far as plays or were they acted a little bit and um, they find that they are really animated. So their, I guess, enthusiasm is delivered and carried well through the phone. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you do if you play sports, um, following direction and, you know, the coaching that your your coach gives you as far as like, OK, we need you to start doing this and this or um, reading plays. Uh, if you play football or um, soccer or basketball. So there's a lot of things that in school you're currently doing that just really help to build a strong foundation before you even apply with the company. We just need to get to know you or your employer needs to get to know you as far as what you've done in your past that is applicable to the current position you're applying for. Yeah, and I, I think that's great because you named a lot of things that I bet students out there watching are involved with in some way, shape or form. And and you make a good point about, you know, skills we learn in sports or after school programs are transferable into a lot of jobs that we might do, being able to follow directions or being coachable or things like that, I think are very important. So I appreciate you bringing that up because I think it's a really valid, valid point. Um, well, I'm gonna leave you with one final question. This one, hopefully an easy one. What is your favorite thing about your job? Uh, the people. I love the people that I work with. I love meeting new people, um, hearing their stories. The the I get to see them start from day one and see them grow um, with the company. So if, in one word, people. Yeah. Well, it sounds like your people are lucky to have you too. So we thank you so much for joining us, Christina, and sharing more information about yourself and your career pathway, but also about Dial America and the opportunities and the work that, that you guys do there. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our participants out there who have joined us as well. Stay tuned into our website for more opportunities and more links to join us later on throughout the fall. And thank you again, Christina. Thank you guys. Sorry for all the ums. Uh, I'll work on that for my next time. <laughs> we all do it. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone.